Good afternoon, my name is Will Holmes, and I'm here today to talk to you about animal abuse and the effect that it has on society. It's just a dog. Have you ever heard that expression before? Well, I'm here today to tell you that it's not just a dog. In fact, I'm going to tell you that it's not just an animal anymore than I am just a man, or you are just a woman. But first, I'd like to share some background information on my senior project. I volunteer at Living at Live Farm in Chester, New Hampshire for my senior project. The farm was formed in 1996 and is a nonprofit that rescues abused animals of all types and it provides a safe environment for the animals to interact with society. This is an expensive undertaking that is run 100% by volunteers and it needs donations. It costs about $35,000 a month to take care of the animals. So a little bit of what I did at the farm. I helped feed over 70 different animals that they have. I cleaned dog and bunny cages. I also had several different volunteer opportunities as I volunteered at the Deerfield Fair and at the Christmas Parade in Concord. And also raised money for the farm by uh, selling calendars. I took away several things from my experience in this project. The hours needed to care for the animals and the amount of volunteers it takes to do this task was much more than I expected. I found out that with five volunteers, just graining the horses takes about two and a half hours twice a day. There's a separate group of volunteers for hay. I also learned that the expenses in the care of large animals is very costly at about $2,200 a month for a horse. Most importantly, I became appreciative of the need that the farm fulfills in our community. Not only does it rescue a lot of animals, but also provides a venue for the public to interact with the animals each Sunday. Seeing firsthand the abused animals suffer and the progress that is made towards rehabilitation was stunning. At Live and Let Live Farm, animals and people can both gain understanding, empathy, and rehabilitation. The farm provides a venue for the people of any age to gain understanding and empathy for each other. This, my friends, is a starting point of paramount importance, a venue to combat bullying and aggression in our society. Let me explain. For my research, I write a book, Just a Dog, by Barnard Arluk. In this book, Arluk describes a court case in 1996, the same year that the farm was formed, where a man's best friend, Willa, a dog, urinated in her owner's house. To those of us with any ounce of empathy, this is no big deal, right? So why do two kids grab a baseball bat and relentlessly beat this defenseless dog as a consequence for peeing in someone else's house? Because Willa's owners paid her, paid the attackers to beat her. Willa was brutally beaten for urinating indoors by adolescents hired by her abusive owner. Luckily for Willa, as the kids continued to be here, an off-duty police officer drove by and stopped the beating. That was fortunate, right? Not so fast. Although Willa's abuse presented as compelling a case as possible in court, the judge ruled that Willa was just a dog and he moved on to more important cases. Consider this poem. I hope that someday they can understand that it's not just a dog. But the thing that gives me humanity and keeps me from being just a man or just a woman, so the next time you hear the phrase just a dog, just smile, because they just don't understand. Animal abuse reflects a much bigger problem in our society than the poor animals that are abused. The abuser's intangible heart and lack of emotional intelligence have ramifications well beyond the physical pain and suffering of the animal's uh, result. Children are not necessarily born with an understanding of empathy, but studies have shown it can be learned. Teaching kids to have compassion and empathy is vital for not only preventing cruelty to animals, but also to teach them to respect and treat those who are different from each other with kindness. I suggest to you that if there is any empathy in Willow's case, she would not have been beaten. Research also shows a cycle of violence in that children who are abused growing up are less likely to develop empathy. An abused child is unable to recognize the animal's pain, more motivated to abuse animals by the feeling of control over a living creature more vulnerable to themselves. Fostering empathy is probably the most effective way to inhibit aggression and bullying in our society. It helps us become more inclusive and tolerant of difference. Studies show that children trained to extend justice, kindness, and mercy to animals become more just, kind, and considerate in their relations to each other. Children are both to be men and women of greater sympathies, more humane, more law-abiding, and more valuable citizens. Our world needs more empathetic people. I could spend the next few minutes, an hour, or weeks showing you photos of abused or beaten animals and how that abuse affects the animal. My guess is that most of you already understand that. Take five seconds to do a Google search and you can see that for yourselves. 
I could also remind you of studies explaining how anal abuse affects the children who witness it. But that's not what I want to talk about today. Instead, think bigger. Think about how the lack of empathy exhibited in animal abuse affects all of us. We all have a dog in this fight. A society that is indifferent to animals lacks empathy and produces bad citizens. Let me tell you about Stella, a shy five-month-old Labrador retriever whose owners paid two men $25 to beat the dog for urinating in a house. Does that sound familiar? Stella was brought outside, tied to a railing, and stabbed in the neck and chest. Just like Lola's case, a cop came by and stopped the killing. Yet again, in court, a judge ruled that Stella was just a dog and no charges followed. Why doesn't society and the court system care? Every year, thousands of animals are victims of vicious cruelty. Both serious crimes against people flooding the court systems, society has viewed crimes against animals as relatively unimportant. Yet, animal abuse cases are not isolated events. In summary, psychologists have known for years that there is a distinct connection between animal cruelty and interpersonal violence. Animal cruelty is often about power or control. The Massachusetts Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals in collaboration with Northeastern University found that 70% of people who commit violent crimes against animals also have criminal records for violent property, drug, or disorder crimes. Before I leave, let me explain how you can help. Live and Let Live Farm is open to the public 2.30 p.m. every Sunday. It's about a 22-minute drive from here. Educate yourself by visiting the farm. Bring your family and friends to meet the animals. My experience at the farm has made me more empathetic and appreciative that just like any other worthy cause, the farm needs funding. Any questions? Thank you.